Hey all today, I am here with Jack and Hannah from Inside the Box. So you know what? Flavor win for us, right? And today they brought Shadows of Brimstone, and they're gonna be talking about how board games help them make one of the very best friends they've ever had. I'm your host, James Hudson, and this is Starting Roll. Jack, Hannah, how's it going? Good. Welcome to the show. You guys are no, most known for Inside the Box, your channel. One of many things we're known for, yes. And One being vulgar. Yes. How did you get your these four misfits together? I, I put out a casting call for just, you know, biggest nitwits I could find. <laughs> and I said, well, I couldn't pay you, but, you know. And but you'll be internet fans. I didn't or really have much goods. to pick from. Yeah. No, no, George and I have been friends since, since forever. Since like, I don't know, like fifth grade or something. So we've kind of come through it all together. We used to, you know, make silly movies about ridiculous stuff when we were, uh, you know, in middle school and high school. And Admit it, you wanted to be the next jackass. Shiver me timbers, matey. We're making our peg boy walk the plank today. Uh, you know, we're, this is pre-jackass, actually. No. <laughs> We did a lot of cool stuff like that, but you know, this is all pre-internet days, so none of us survived, and it's, it's, it's very sad. You can't see us as kids running around doing our little hijinks and stuff. But you know, that, that was the base of it, which is something we just, we just always did. You know, our hobby was just making movies and stuff. So do you have like any formal training in filmmaking at all, or just no, no, all we, stuff we you just still watched taught? a lot of stuff, yeah, yeah. We just figured out how to do it. George had a super early version of, you know, Photoshop way back then. Sure. And you know, this is the 90s, late 90s, you know, mid 90s, no one's doing anything like this, especially people our age, we're like 15, 16. And so we spend, you know, days doing lightsaber battles and then painting them all frame by frame, staying up super late at night trying to, you know, do special effects. Now it's all super easy, so yeah. it's great, you know. Yeah. So all the all the stuff we do in our show is just like, yeah, oh, this is so much simpler than way back in the day. Hannah, how did you get involved in this pile of misfits? They kidnapped me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I warned you about that. Um, uh, you're not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, we met and then I got introduced to his like. Loser friends, no wonderful friends. <laughs> I got introduced to his wonderful friends, and uh, you know they were all nerdy playing board games. At first, I would just like bake stuff for them and then bring it out. But then, I think I was like, wait, I've played board games before. Maybe I could play. But like the biggest, you know, problem with board games is I think they can be pretty intimidating because. Mm -hmm. I have like attention problems, so like if people are, you know, uh, going through the rules, I just kind of like blank out. And George happens to be really good at explaining stuff. He's so. a great explainer. He's our yeah. personal Rodney Smith. Like he'll just learn right. the rules, read it on the way over here, and then just teach us the game. I love like he, okay. he has that role in, the, in in every episode. Like yeah. he's the that part's true. Yeah. And I love how it's uh, you guys are always interrupting him, and he has George has the best look. Like you know he's like what we all feel like when some, we're looking around the table when we're explaining a board game, and somebody's on their phone, and you're like I know you're gonna ask a question later about the thing that I just explained because you weren't paying attention. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I, I, I mean, I still do have like attention problems. So like when I get like maybe like a third of what he says in, but then he's patient enough to like still tell me when I'm later, I'm like, what, what did, what did I do? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm so glad we have him. I, I feel like without him, I would be more intimidated sure. to play. Like sure. it's so nice to have like patient people with you. So you grew up with this guy named George, mm -hmm. made films. Um, and then something happened there? Well, we kind of diverged. I, I wound up going to school in uh, Northern California, which is really far away since we're in Southern California. Sure. And, uh, you know, we tried to stay connected. We'd play uh, like World of Warcraft online, you know, hang out in there, you know, do raids and alliance stuff. Alliance like or Horde? We were both Alliance. Yes! <laughs> that was almost, yeah, <laughs> that could have <laughs> been bad. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, that was the way we all kept in touch, our, yeah. our whole friend group, you know, we do raiding and stuff like that. And eventually, you know, we kind of, um, I got my degree and I wound up going off to Kenya okay. to do hyena. My degree is in wildlife biology, oddly okay. enough. Um, <laughs> this is my surprise face. Yes. <laughs> you wouldn't think so. Wildlife biology. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. Anyway, so I was in Kenya doing a research project out in the Maasai Mara, and it's boring out there. You know, we're, there's no civilization, it's just a few of us in this camp looking at hyenas from dawn to dusk. He counted time with like Mountain Dews, yeah. like bottles of Mountain Dew, however, like how low he was on Mountain Dew. I can have one do. per day, so He's like, counting down. Yeah. <laughs> how many days, it's just like, you know, the little, on, yeah. on the prison wall, it's like, okay, there's there. Nice. So we're out there and they had, um, the, the two grad students that I was there working with, they had this game, a uh, board game called Settlers of Catan. And they said, hey, you wanna play? I'm like, yeah, sure, it sounds fun. And we got obsessed with this game. 
I was sure. like, this is so cool. I hadn't really played a modern board game. You know, everyone plays Monopoly and all the bull crap as a kid. And it's always terrible and you wind up getting into fights and it's just the worst. But this was awesome. So as with many other people, that was my gateway game. Sure. And as, when I came back, I was like, we should play more of these. And little did I know, uh, George and some of my other friends had started their own board game group in the few years while I was gone off college. So every Wednesday they hung out and played board games, all sorts of cool board games. So sure. we had kind of independently uh, found that hobby and came back and converged together. And we had kind of decided, hey, we should still make these, you know, funny videos that we used to make. That's just like something we always just used to do. It just comes right. naturally. We're bored. I don't know. Let's just make a make a movie about something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's kind of like non-scripted. We just sort of would think of it as, as we go. And we decided to mix those two things, you know, making the movies and this right. new hobby that we all kind of got into. And we said, yeah, wouldn't it be fun to have a really high, like, kind of production value, just silly special effects and all sorts of fun stuff like we used to do. It's pretty cool because, you know, you chose to bring Shadows of uh, Brimstone and mm -hmm. that was, I'm pretty sure it was this video that I found your channel on. I was just getting into the hobby. This was like three, four years ago, five Our years ago. Our first Shadows of Brimstone, yeah, it came out in 2014. Yeah. yeah. So about five years ago, that's about when I was onboarding, you know, and I was like, oh, what the heck? These people are funny. They're really stupid, but they're also really funny. <laughs> and I love it. And so um, then, I, and, you know, I consumed all of the back episodes, right? Even the really bad ones, you know, the Star Trek one. I'm so sorry beginning. about those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've come a long way. Um, <laughs> but it, it, they're, they're endearing and your group's endearing. So I was really excited when you said you're going to bring Shadows of Brimstone because we already had that little connection. And then obviously, we got super obsessed with this game uh, early on. It was like the Christmas that it came out. We just spent, you know, we played the first game like, this is great, nonstop for the next like few weeks. So we would always we'd constantly be meeting up every single weekend to play more, level up our characters, you know, get new loot and all that. It really uh, filled a lot of the same void as us, you know, kind of playing like World of Warcraft online because it's a very similar game. You know, you're all hanging out with your friends, going through the dungeon, beating the bosses, getting fat loots and everything, you know, rolling just tons of dice to do, do damage. It's just super fun. Yelling at Brandon, telling that he's a new. Yeah, yeah. He just Leroy Jenkins straight Plus up in you there. You get to just... sprout like <sighs> tentacles out of your head or whatever, and it's it could be a good thing because you can hold like an extra gun. <laughs> well, that's a great thing about this game about, above others. It's kind of like I think of it as like D and D light. You know, as we, sure. we didn't really know what it was about at, at first you know, when we just got in it, but then as we started to get deeper into it, it's like wow, this there's a lot of permanence. You know, it's kind of episodic. You go into a dungeon, you do your stuff, but then things stick with you, you level up, you get new talents and stuff, that's part's obvious, but you can also die during an encounter. And you don't, it's not permanent, but when you wake up, if you died from injuries, then you can get a permanent injury. So like maybe you'll have a mangled hand, now you can't use two-handed weapons. Uh, and that just sticks with you. You can try to get it healed okay, at the hospital. it's because you can sprout yeah. extra hands. Yeah. Or and tentacles. There's, yeah. Exactly, right? <laughs> and there's other things that can be positive traits, exactly. You, you can get corrupted by these dark stone uh, creatures that are all around here and you can get mutations if you let them build up too much. And sure. They could be negative or positive. Sure. But the point is that all this stuff sticks with you, you know. My original character has fangs, so I get like an extra attack. Uh, one of George's characters has like a prehensile tail so we can hold like an extra weapon. Like nice. you get these cool things that just stick with your character and build up over all this time. You can have an extra head and wear an extra hat. Yes. <laughs> two heads. <laughs> yeah, I need two hats. That's the way it goes, exactly. right? You got two hats? It's funny you said something about it's like D&D light and I feel like yeah. that's one of the things that probably prohibits people from getting into D&D is that you need a, you need a dungeon master. Yeah, exactly. Right? Every group does not have its own Matt Mercer. You know, Ooh. we need, <laughs> you, that's like, you need someone like very talented who can write all this stuff at home, come, come to you with his, this adventure. That is prohibited for some people. Sure. So I love games like this where they don't require one push and do that. Everything is just automated. You know, the creatures have certain rules that they follow. Uh, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all scripted, but it's still cool because every creature has different types of movement, different types of attacks. You still gotta, you know, use your brain, but no one has to work that. No one has to be against the group. Yeah. It's all just, you're all in it together. Go, well, go. I mean, obviously you're speaking into my heart because I was, you know, I even started off the show talking about how Warcraft is what helped me Helped me flunk out of college, right? Because <laughs> um, I was up to I was up to 5 a.m. rating it some yep. nights, and wow. and so you would have these, you know, this experience when you when you say it kind of replaces or gives you a similar feel yeah. of that. I'm like the camaraderie. Oh well, I don't have time to play Warcraft anymore, yeah. right? But I could get together once a week and have a two-hour session of this. Yeah. That's way easier to pull off. So yeah, it's like you know, as people get older and they start adulting more, you. Some people get married for some reason. Okay, you don't <laughs> start need sprouting your mom. kids. I don't know why people do these things, but you know, it makes it harder to get together and you know, do these things. So. And if like get you get together instead of playing video games, you don't need your mom like collecting your piss and <laughs> in a bucket. 
<laughs> and you can have your friends like bake stuff for you instead of like ordering your mom around. Yeah, right. And there's no grinding in this game. You know, it's just you can put it out, and it's yeah, it's, it's like a two-hour game. You know, you can have like a fun time hour or two, but you don't. It doesn't require all that outside stuff. So yeah. So all simple. the all the games you could have featured, you featured this one just because it probably you'd say it just connects you into the, some of your previous fandoms the most. Yeah, it's it's really similar. I think uh, what drew, drew me to it in the, in the first part is uh, just the theme is so great. It's just unique. So it's like this Lovecraftian horror kind of thing, which I really love. Uh, Lovecraft is fantastic, except for the racism. But <laughs> he just you know had this, these great fantastical worlds of this you know otherworldly horror going on, and then they mix it with like this old west. So you know kind of like this niche thing that you don't really see combined. Right. Um, you know, everything is like in zombies or, you know, you know, maybe like a Japanese theme or, you know, old fantasy, like sure. Tolkien kind of stuff. And this game could have easily been that, but they decided to go this completely different route with it. So that's what really, you know, drew me to this and why I fell in love with it is. They I love the themes zombies. and the stories that come out yeah. of this. These archetypes, you know, like Indian Scout or the saloon girl, you know, lawman, a preacher who is like a caster, you know, he casts magical spells with his holy power, you know, like what fun archetypes to use for something. And the best part is you get to play either gender because yeah. you just flip the card. Okay. Piano player. So you can be a male saloon girl if you want. Yeah. I dig it. Well, he's the piano player. Yeah. Saloon boy. <laughs> saloon boy. I know there was a, a story about your wedding. Oh, God. Yeah, so we didn't know Brandon at the time. We did not invite him to our wedding because we got married <laughs> soon after the show started. Sure. We had already, already been engaged when we were in Kenya. Um, you know, he was just a friend friend from work at the time, so it would be awkward to just be like, hey, come to our wedding. It was like, like a Hawaiian wedding. He would have to pay a million dollars to come. But, you know, it's funny, though, because in the five years that we've known him now, like, he's become one of our best friends. Like, we hang out all the time, and we right. didn't know that at the time. And it's funny because I think playing the board games with him you know, every week shooting these episodes, you know, playing games when we're not shooting, you know, to find the next thing to do is really brought us together really quickly. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of an introvert. I don't really make adult friends. Right. It's, it's difficult, you know, friends from work. Yeah, yeah, you got those people, but you don't really want to see them outside. <laughs> so that's why all my friends are like, you know, George and John, all, all the people you see coming in the videos, they're all my friends from like middle school and stuff and sure. elementary school and all that. So Brandon's my first adult friend. And I really credit the fact that we just would play board games, you know, every week, every other week, you know, and it would just a way to like fast track getting to know someone. It's all about having the shared experience, you know, it's like in the old days, you know, people would like get together in a group and go off to war or something, or they would, you know, get together in a group, go walk a long way and, you know, throw, throw a ring into a, you know, mountain to destroy it. These are just, you know, ultimately these are just excuses just to hang out with, with your friends and have sure. a good time, you know? Sure. No one really cares about the goal there. It's just having that adventure together. Yeah. And I think that's what board games do, and they really just allow you to get to know people. Sure. Like, these things are really useful. So for example, let's say, hypothetical situation, let's say two of my friends were in quicksand and they're both sinking at the same time, like, help, Jack, help, you know? I'm gonna think, okay, well, wait a minute. Should I help the guy who in our last game of Scythe, snuck up behind me, broke our alliance, and attacked me. Or should I help the guy who didn't do that? Well, you know what? Maybe the guy who is a backstabber doesn't get helped. I always make it's sure good to, to know these things in. about your friends, right? Yes. I always make sure to rub it in. It's like, oh, remember last time when you didn't help me when I asked for it? She well, likes to twist that knife. <laughs> I guess I won't help you now. Or like, I, yeah. if someone did help me, it's like, oh, you know, you shall be paid. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, the Lannisters are always yeah, I, I try to train people to like actually help me or want to because right. you know, I really like highlight what I'm doing. Yeah, so I think I think your story about Brandon is particularly interesting, right? Because it's it's hard to make adult friends. It is, right? It's so hard. It we're all busy, we all have things to do. So I, I really think like that's something that probably people watching would be like if they haven't used board games to help bring friends in, right? Like Yeah, so I'm an introvert and I kinda hate everyone. <laughs> There's a couple weeks, exactly. Yeah. But you know, it's really hard for me to make friends as an adult. You know, you have your work friends and all that. But Brandon was a special case, so we invited him to come shoot this video with us. And then it's like, okay, well, that was really good. Let's do the next video. So we got to figure out what to play. Let's play some games next weekend. So we brought him over for that, and we play some more games, and shoot some, shot some more videos, and played some more games. And you know, you really get to know someone like on a personal level so quickly doing that. Right. You know, it's like social lubricant. Like you just, you know, it's a way to kind of hang out, get to know each other. And, and not go and try. Yeah, right. It just fast tracks the relationship. Well, what's crazy, right? It's like, when we're playing a board game, you're not like, hey, where are you from? Like, you're not getting into personal questions, but something yeah. about playing a board game 
It comes just up naturally. sharing the space. It's yeah. And you can, you can judge make, people like based on what they choose. Yeah, you can learn be. a lot about people from the kind of behavior they use sure. in the game. So I guess the the, the 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 biggest takeaway that I have from our chat is facilitating friendships quickly is board games can do that for us, right? Like it's it makes it easy. It makes it less you, awkward. Less it's awkward. It, it's easy mode, right? You can sit down and play a game. No, it's it's incredible. I was. I don't make adult friends. Brandon has been the one exception. I was always trying to think, why is that? Why is that? I didn't. Now I know. That's why. It's crazy. Uh, if everybody is online, they want to follow the show, come check out an episode. That'll be on Inside the Box on YouTube mm -hmm. and the Instagramos on the Facebooks. and the Twitters. I'm on Twitter, Inside the Box GD. Okay. Yeah, nice. Let's play some Shadows of Brimstone. All right. So you're the saloon girl. Hope you're okay with that. If you've never played Shadows of Brimstone, go give it a try. Click the link below to support the show and buy your copy today. Make sure to come back to Gamma Ray for more episodes of Starting Roll.